Well, Oilers fans, that was probably the opposite of a fun game to watch. Uh, they got a point. It was a tough game. That second period was incredibly frustrating. Don't worry. I will be talking about the reviews that happened in the second period. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of thoughts that I'm going to try and put together. I'm going to have written down and I will elaborate more on in tomorrow's day after video. But I am going to touch on a couple of things tonight because there is stuff that I want to talk about that I'm sure you want to know what my reaction is on as well. So let's get into the post-game recap. Uh, first period, there was a good start by the dry side of line. Corey Perry was on line two today. Connor Brown drew into the lineup for uh, Derek Ryan as well. Um, and Cody CC was also back. He had a bit of a flu, but he was back in tonight as well. Skinner made a good save on neighbors. Brown had a good shift. Um, and then the Blues with a couple of chances off turnovers by the Oilers. I thought the first five, six minutes for Edmonton wasn't exactly great in terms of how they were managing the puck. But as that first period went along, I felt like they were doing much better. Skinner made a good save by Kairou. Ekholm then scores not long after that. His uh, the, the fourth line, they were they were buzzing. They were creating uh, a pretty good cycle, turnovers. Connor Brown feeds Ekholm, who blasts one past Bennington to make it one nothing for Edmonton. And then Kulak with a good defensive play not too long after that. Ekholm then with a good four check allowed the Oilers to have sustained zone time once again and then Cody CC he saved a goal uh on the Oilers uh in the blue paint near the goal line and that wouldn't be the only defender that saved a goal for Edmonton tonight as well Bouchard had a play like that in the second um on their power play Blues had a good penalty kill opportunity but again we'll talk about that Kane tips one home but it was called no goal for a high stick now that one it was called no goal on the ice and based on the angles that they were showing on Sportsnet it would have been very hard to overturn that one and call that one a goal so that one is you know that that was fair i think um nurse with a good rush at the end of the period end of one one of the nimton shots were eight six oilers and the expected goals were 0 0.35 to 0 0.15 in favor of st louis now i thought it was a low event period overall i thought the oilers in terms of playing a strong road period especially against a tough blues team i thought they did their job and i was hoping that the game would continue like this it doesn't always have to be pretty but i was hoping edmonton could continue that but the second period was absolutely wild so let's jump into it Oilers were a little flat footed to start the second Blues had a couple of early good looks Fogel just about puts one into an empty net but he missed and then Bennington made a terrific save on Henrique. Dreisaitl made a great pass to find him. And then there was some chippy ice conditions. The puck was bouncing all over the place tonight. Pucks were bouncing over guys' sticks. Uh, nobody could make clean breakout plays. Uh, it was very, it was a very choppy game in terms of the ice quality. Players were falling down. It was brutal. And then Ryan Nugent Hopkins scores his first goal at even strength in six weeks. However, St. Louis challenged this goal. Now, Zach Hyman, he kind of crashed towards the top of the crease and it looked like his skate made contact with Bennington's legs. Now, Bennington's legs, they were closed when Hyman made contact. Bennington reacted to the puck that went in front of him on the rebound. Nugent Hopkins grabs it. Now, Bennington, at this point, is no longer being uh, touched by Hyman. He opens the legs up. Nuge puts the puck through the five hole. In my opinion... You know, call on the ice was a goal. Pretty hard to overturn that. And this review took an extended amount of time. Almost five minutes long was this uh, review for goalie interference. And, and they eventually decided it was goalie interference. Now, that you know, just that initial call, I'm like, okay, fine. Yes, Hyman did make, technically made a bit of contact there. It was in the blue paint. So, you know, I don't mind that it was overturned. But what was interesting was how long it actually took that review to take place and how long they took to make that decision. Now, a little later, uh, Kane fights Tucker, lands a few right bombs. It was a very good fight for Vander Kane. And then Kane was given an extra penalty for removing Tucker's helmet during the fight. That is a penalty. I saw some people kind of complaining about that, but they did put that rule in years and years ago. They don't want players taking off of uh, each other's helmets during fights. And then uh, Shen ties it on the power play. Now, this is where things get very interesting. The Oilers challenge for goaltender interference. Stuart Skinner was making a motion as if he had been contacted. He made a little motion to the bench and he was pointing at his pad and kind of moving his blocker around. Now, so the Oilers, they challenged this for goalie interference as well. They review it. This review was much, much shorter, um, and the call is uh, upheld. It was the, the call on the ice was a goal, and the referees went, yes, that is a goal. That is not goaltender interference. So now the Oilers are penalized for delay of game for uh, losing the challenge. Now, I just want to show you something here because... Um, I don't know what the logic was. I haven't seen the actual written explanation from the NHL war room yet because they usually put some kind of statement out when it comes to any kind of video review. 
Now, on the replay, Toropchenko does make contact with Skinner with his stick. Uh, his stick ends up pushing through Skinner's blocker and kind of hits the pad as well before that puck goes in the net. Now, Toropchenko is outside the crease, but his stick is being like he's jamming his stick towards Skinner in the crease. So let's take a look at this. Now, some people were saying there wasn't much contact there. I beg to differ. Look at this. I want everyone to take a look at how bent the shaft of this stick is. If that is not goalie interference, and if there's not a lot of force being applied to the goaltender from the opposing player, I have no idea what that would actually look like. What, what would it take to overturn the call on the ice in this situation? Because in this situation, if you called the Hyman or the Nugent Hopkins goal back based on Hyman's goalie interference, this one this one as well should have been called back, in my opinion. Now, I would have preferred both goals count because I like goal scoring. Goal scoring is exciting for fans, and Bob Stoffer kind of touched on that in the second intermission as well. He understood why both calls went the way they did, but he was he's he's like me. He, you know, you're trying to grow the game. You want fans to be engaged and excited. But, you know, you take goals off the board for one team, and then another gets a goal upheld and this goal stayed and I just I don't like this at all there's a lot of contact and this was before the puck went in the net just to let you know you can go back on the replay and take a look at this look how bent that is that is a lot of force being applied to Skinner's arm and uh, his pad area and of course that would prevent the goalie from being able to properly extend and make the reaction save uh, that is necessary from the shot where it came from from Shen on the ice that should have been disallowed based on the precedent that was set just like three minutes prior and the review for the Nugent Hopkins goal took much longer than this one and it just makes me wonder what they're looking at when they're on their tiny little tablets why and why is it tablets too like they're tiny we have the technology we have 4k cameras we have a beautiful OLED displays on big tablets I saw a Samsung tablet at Best Buy that's like 10 and a half inches with the screen size it is absolutely ginormous and these these officials they're they're just looking at a tiny little screen uh i don't understand i i just don't get it uh and by 10 inch tablet i mean like it was like a 15 inch tablet at best buy it was it, it was a giant tablet that i saw the other day in best buy so i don't know why these calls go the way they do if you're a frustrated fan i'm just as frustrated as you i've played hockey throughout a lot of my life i've been watching hockey since i was four years old and i still couldn't tell you what goal your interference is and i still have ptsd from the anaheim series back in 2017 but i'm not going to get into that because that is a whole other can of worms so let's continue the goal is upheld it is 1-1 at this point in the game and St. Louis has another power play. And then Dry Seidel on the penalty kill. He uh he trips a blues uh forward. It is now five on three for the blues for a minute and eleven seconds. But Skinner makes a big save. Nuge with a good clear. Ekholm makes a block and a clear. Henrique as well with a clear. The penalty kill came up clutch, did not allow St. Louis any real good looks, and they kill the five on three. Then the Oilers put their top line out. They had relentless pressure, a couple of good chances. Skinner makes a great save on Torobchenko. McLeod with a good backhand shot that was saved by Bennington and then McDavid draws a power play of his own he was tripped on a uh, wraparound chance uh Jordan Bennington of we love Bennington I just kidding I hate Bennington uh he sticks his stick out trips McDavid it's a clear penalty uh the Oilers do not do anything on the power play and that's the story of their power play tonight they did not convert on the two chances they got I feel like they probably should have had about three or four maybe even five power play opportunities in this game some of the stuff that the Blues were getting away with with was pretty outrageous of course the Oilers get away with their stuff as well so I, I'm not going to complain too much I will save these thoughts for tomorrow Dreisaitl had another penalty near the end of the period uh, after Carrick and Buchnevich both went off so it was four on four Dreisaitl's penalty that made it four on three for the Blues end of two one one shots were 24 23 in favor of St. Louis expected goals were 2.3 to 1.23 in favor of the Blues after two and all I wrote in my notes for the end of period uh description was yikes um at this point, I was pretty checked out in terms of just my engagement with the game. I was no longer excited. It just had one of those feelings to it. Every every time Edmonton plays St. Louis, it just doesn't feel right. I just don't like playing this team. 
So third period starts. Dayarnay had a good block on the penalty kill. Brown and Janmark had a chance shorthanded. I thought Brown made a really nice play. He came in and then he kind of faked going behind the net and threw it out in front. And then Janmark, I don't know if he didn't expect the pass to get to him, but he threw kind of a weak backhand pass towards the net. Um, so they didn't convert on that opportunity. Oilers make the kill. And then not long after, Shen makes it 2-1 Blues on a 2-on-1. The puck bounced over Bouchard's stick at the offensive blue line. Kulak was the only defender back on the 2-on-1. Kulak didn't really take the pass or the shooter. It was a nice pass. Shen didn't even get all of the shot, but Skinner had already been down and it's hard to save the puck when it kind of knuckles the way it did. Um, it was a calamity of errors and it, it just, that's the type of game it was with the puck bouncing. Unlucky puck over Bouchard's stick. Not a big fan of that. Uh, Oilers didn't get another power play. Um, they needed a goal at this point in the game. Of course, uh, the power play was terrible. That first unit was awful. They didn't generate a dang thing on it. Dry was struggling. I wrote at that point in the game and he was, I do like that. He scored. That is great. But I thought overall dry had a pretty rough game. Skinner made a good save on neighbors. Hyman was stopped in the crease and just couldn't get his stick on it. And then dry ties the game. It was a beautiful pass by McDavid. He pressured the defender, steals the puck, does a nice little spin pass to dry who one times it passed Bennington to tie the game at two and then Hyman had a one-timer that was stopped it was partially blocked on the way to the net Corey Perry then had a really good chance off a face-off Ekholm just missed the net right at the end of the game right at the buzzer end of the third the score was 2-2 shots were 34-20 at Edmonton and the expected goals were 3.2 to 2.25 in favor of St. Louis so we head to overtime. Hyman was stopped on a good shot. Ekholm had a blast that was stopped as well. Nugent Hopkins had a good shot. And then Brandon Saad wins it on a breakaway. I'm not really sure what Ekholm was doing with the puck. Um, had control. And then St. Louis in the middle of a change. Puck went near their bench. Two guys came on. It was a two on zero. It would have been almost impossible for Skinner. It's hard to blame him on that one. And and it's tough too because Ekholm very rarely makes mistakes. So I don't want to get too you know too on Ekholm you know back about that. Um, Edmonton gets a point. Final score, 3-2 Blues. Shots were 37-29 in favor of M10. Expected goals were 3.45 to 2.50 in favor of St. Louis. Now, my personal three stars tonight. I gave Stuart Skinner the third star. I thought he made some crazy good saves for the Oilers, especially in that second period. They were under siege for a little while. He made the stops when he needed to. And mo and, and the three goals that went on him tonight, it's hard to blame him for any of those, especially that first one. Should have been goal interference. Second star I gave to Ekholm, despite the play in overtime, he did have a strong game. He had a goal and an assist, almost 25 minutes time on ice. And first star I gave to Shen off the Blues, who had two goals. Next up for the Oilers is the Dallas Stars on Wednesday. That is 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. However, actual puck drop, drop is closer to 7.50 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Jack Michaels said that on the broadcast tonight. Um, very frustrating game. If you're an Oilers fan, there's going to be a lot to talk about in tomorrow's day after video. So definitely check that out. I will have my thoughts more, yeah, more concise once I, I let the emotions kind of just, you know, I, once I take a deep breath and I'm able to like think clearly on some of the things I want to talk about, there was a lot of different things to talk about with this game. Um, different players that I thought had rough games, players that I thought had good games. The officiating is something that is just, it's poor league wide. So I don't want to sit here and go Empton lost because of the officials. Cause that's, that would, that's just not true. It was just a tough game. Um, and I actually kind of hope so St. Louis, I think they are only three points behind the Kings now for the last wildcard spot. Now, if Edmonton were to somehow come back and find a way to pass Vancouver and win the division, well, oh boy, they might be playing the Blues or the or the Predators in the first round if St. Louis is able to get into a playoff spot. I don't think Edmonton wants to face either of those teams. I would rather take my chances against Vegas or LA, in my opinion. So um, if Edmonton ever met St. Louis in a playoff series, that would be headache-inducing. I would rip my hair out. So we'll see how the season progresses. Uh, the Oilers' magic number to clinch a playoff spot is four. I believe because um, they each got a point maybe it's three someone can correct me in the comments um, I obviously the NHL will put out a thing too so the Oilers are very close to clinching at least they got a point tonight uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what did you think about the game did you think the calls on the ice uh, and the reviews did you think those were the right calls how did you think Edmonton played let me know all of your thoughts in the comments I love reading them I do engage with most uh, people that comment um, 
So again, let me know what you think. And as always, uh, if you like these videos, make sure you hit like. If you really like it, make sure you hit subscribe. I will see you all tomorrow. I will have a day after discussion video about this game specifically up tomorrow morning sometime. So please check that out as well. As always, I do appreciate you tuning in. Your support means the world to me. We are getting closer to 1,800 subscribers, so that is very exciting. Tell somebody that you love them tonight and uh, have a wonderful evening. Have a good sleep. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.